Hello, this is Jared Craig. I'm the host of the Vet Voice podcast with Veterans for America First. I have the pleasure of interviewing Hadas Levy, who is also a fellow ambassador for Veterans for America First. So, Hadas, welcome to the show, and tell the viewers a little bit about yourself and, and what you do as an ambassador. Uh, you're also a professional singer. You're a very busy person. I, I saw recently where you were out in the trenches handing out food and water to first responders in, in Florida after the Hurricane Ian uh, cleanup work. So uh, tell us about yourself. Well, I'm actually, um, I was a professional professional singer when I was a child. When I was 12 years old, I started singing in uh, Beverly Hills for many celebrity galas. When I was 16, I already had a demo deal with Epic Records. And when I was 17, I had a full-blown uh, recording contract with Epic Sony Records. And I recorded with many top producers in Hollywood and in the music business. And I also was on American Idol. I was a semi-finalist season two. And um, I actually stopped singing. I didn't perform or sing after I got married and had three kids. And I only started singing again when I moved to Florida less than two years ago. And the reason I started singing again was because I really, really absolutely fell in love with Florida. I moved from California which had really gone down the drain because of the government. And after the COVID lockdowns, me and my family were out of there. We were so excited to move to Florida where Governor DeSantis was governor. And it really inspired me to start singing again and, and be active in the um, political community here. Um, just because I didn't want the same thing to happen to Florida, what happened to California. And I, and I really wanted to make my voice loud and clear and be, you know, in an inspiration for people to vote red and everywhere I go and everything that I do now, it's really, um, it's really just to become a big part of my life. And I have three kids, one with special needs. They're all school aged children. And um, I'm really happy that we're here in Florida where Governor DeSantis doesn't let things like critical race theory or um, uh, sex in sex preferences be a part of the school curriculum, you know, at a young age. And um, I just, I just really love it. I mean, and, and even now, you know, with the hurricane Ian, I love Florida so much and to see the devastation, although I'm on the East coast in Boca Raton, to see what happened to the West coast where I have many friends um, and I perform there all the time, actually in Naples. I, I didn't even think twice about going over there and helping out to volunteer. I work with an organization called Yedi Deem USA. They help, um, they help people in need all over South Florida. They are a Jewish organization, but they don't help only Jewish people. Um, a lot of the people in the, uh, that are members that are volunteers, there are Jewish and they are Israeli as well, but they help most of South Florida. They went over there. They set up a headquarter at the synagogue in Fort Myers, the Chabad synagogue. And from day one, they were handing out food, hot meals, generators, water, supplies, air mattresses. We um, actually drove out and delivered food to the elderly who didn't have the ability to come to the synagogue to get a hot meal. And there was so many donations, so many people came together. And, um, you know, there's still a lot of work to do out there, actually. It's it's going to take a long time to get uh, things back to how they were. But there are a lot of volunteers. And, you know, it's nice to see the community come together so much here and um, and try and help each other out. So, yeah. Well, it, it's great that uh, something as simple as a meal in a time of crisis can really bring people together. And I, I think that you know, going out and helping the members of your community, uh, your new community. You, you fled from the, the the state of California to the, the last great uh, sanctuary for Americans in Florida with uh, Governor right. DeSantis. I live in Georgia, so uh, I've uh, thought a couple of times in the past couple of years that we should just rename us uh, North Florida. And I would <laughs> welcome that with Governor DeSantis. But, yeah. Uh, uh, I, uh, I'm happy to hear that you're more involved in the political world in Florida, and is that uh, Florida state government that you've been involved with, or also the national stage? Correct. Yeah, I um, since I started singing again, I have sang for Donald Trump. 
I've sang for Governor DeSantis. I sang at two CPACs, one in Orlando, one in Dallas. And I sang for Donald Trump's Freedom Tour. I sing, I sing for Rudy Giuliani on a, in a private party. I sing for a lot of different galas um, for different candidates and you know different different America First events that I that I feel very passionate about. Um, also, yes, I as you were saying before, I I am one of the smaller percentage of Jews that's a conservative. I know a lot of Jewish people are not cons are more liberal and they vote Democrat, but there is a very strong um, Jewish community, especially for people who migrated here from other countries, that are very very patriotic, and you know they love Donald Trump and they love all of the uh, America First values. So that's uh, that's another thing that I also um, am very um, involved is involved in is I'm a proud Jewish conservative and a lot of people that I'm friends with here in Florida are Jewish and they are conservatives as well. I think, I mean, most of the people in Florida, you know, are big fans of DeSantis. I think, I mean, almost everyone I talk to here likes DeSantis. It's a very small percentage versus in California where it's a lot of, you know, every, a lot of the people there are liberal. So that's, it's another great thing about living in a, place where you have a lot of like-minded people is that we have the same values here all right <laughs> so as you're as you're traveling around and you're you're in touch with the jewish community what issues have led some of the voters who have voted historically democratic to change this term and start following the the principles of conservatism or are they more likely to vote for a republican candidate yeah, I think the main thing really is that people don't want their freedoms taken away. And America is a country that was, the, the Constitution was built off of, you know, capitalism, freedom, the right to bear arms, the right, um, uh, freedom of speech. And all of these things have been taken away from us. Slowly, they're, they're trying to take more and more and more of our freedoms away. And um, Americans don't like that. So... People who used to vote Democrat, I understand, you know, there are certain cultural issues that are, you know, the, the number one thing that divide the two parties. Um, but for the most part, when it comes to our freedom, um, we don't want that taken away. And Democrats don't want that taken away as well. So a lot of them are switching over. And, um, and you know, I think a lot of people that do research are switching over. I think, I don't think I've ever heard of a Republican saying, yeah, I did some research and I decided that I'm a Democrat. I don't think I've ever heard that in my life, but I've heard a lot of Democrats. Yeah. I heard a lot of Democrats saying, you know, I researched and the policies and I don't really stand with this and that. And, and they do, and they, and they switch over. So it's all about how familiar you are. Well, one thing I've noticed as I've interviewed a lot of candidates is that the opinion that common sense is not so common anymore. And we yeah. expect people to have a sense of agreeing, uh, an agreement on principles and ideology when the left is lacking any belief system and they right. are destructive. They are not cohesive. And you're right to uh, identify the, the movement. The, the left have gone so far left that those in the center are stuck in a vacuum. They're, they've been Absolutely. abandoned by their party. And are you Absolutely. saying that in Florida? Um, no, I mean, in Florida, you know, since I moved here less than two years ago, almost everyone in my circle and my group of friends is conservative. I don't even know anybody that's not conservative. I have such a huge network of friends here through the synagogue and through the through politics and through the moms that I know from school. They're all conservative. They all love DeSantis. They really, really do. So in California, I feel like a lot of people just kind of gave up because they have no choice. You know, their kids had to get vaccinated in order to go to school. The, they get kind of bullied by other parents. Um, I'm talking about the, like the, the friend groups or like if you like Donald Trump in California, then you are uh, a racist, you know? That's how it is over there. If you were not down for Black Lives Matter, you were a racist. And now here we have the proof that Black Lives Matter was all, you know, just um, one big scam. 
And I knew that from the beginning. I mean, from, from day one, I knew Black Lives Matter was a scam because all lives matter. It's, you can't just be racist one way, you know, it's not okay. So now it's coming out, but in California, you know, everybody there has kind of given up that was conservative with me. They just kind of hide who they are. They hide their conservatism and they just go on like that. And so it's really sad actually. Well, if you had one bit of advice that you would give to either Governor DeSantis or Donald Trump to reach out to your community specifically, well, first off, do you think they need any advice? Have they already been active in that community for the issues that matter somewhat universally? But would there be any bit of advice that you would give either one of them? No, I think that Governor DeSantis is probably, you know, Israel's most he's he's Israel's biggest fan from any governor. He's done a lot for Israel. And same with Donald Trump. I mean, he moved the embassy to Jerusalem. So uh, I, I, I just, I love them both. I really, really do. I think that Donald Trump was the greatest president we ever had. And I think that Governor DeSantis is the greatest governor we ever had. So they're just two amazing leaders. Both love America. They're both, um, they're just both incredible. And I'll always support them. It'd be nice if we could clone them. That would yeah. be fantastic. <laughs> what free That's right. I actually really love Carrie Lake too over in Arizona. She's she's also amazing. So um, I'm rooting for her as well. I, I'm happy that I can stand with you as ambassadors for Veterans for America First. So if any of our viewers wanted to find any more information about you or what you're doing, um, do you have any events coming up? Anything that you'd like to plug for your upcoming calendar? Yeah, no, I um, right now I am going to be spending right now. It's the Jewish holidays. Um, so I am going to be spending the most of October with the family. And I do have the national anthem competition, which is in the end of October. That is has been rescheduled because of Hurricane Ian. It was actually supposed to be um, a few weeks ago. So the top I'm in the top five of the national anthem competition and the winner stays at the Boca Bowl. And um, after that, no, I'm taking it easy. I'm actually also a real estate agent and developer here. I work a lot, but I will, I sing for the community. I love to sing and I love to write music as well. And um, I work, you know, as I'm also a real estate developer. I do both. So I'm, I'm quite busy with both actually right now. With everybody moving to Florida, that adds to your workload too. So oh, yeah. a lot of people, lots of people, right. Yes. <laughs> well, I appreciate you coming on the show. And at any time you want to give us a call and get back on the show, or we're going to be on the Trump bus tour starting October 18th, all the way through November 8th and finishing up with Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. I'll be on the tour every day. If you ever wanted to call in, let us know, and we will see what we can do to fit you in on any day. Um, but Great. I look forward to uh, our future conversations, hopefully after the election. Will be all one big celebration. Absolutely. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure. Thank you.